Gaurav, today the spirit of entrepreneurship, the spirit of startups in India is very vibrant. It's it's everywhere, and this is something which one could not have imagined uh, a few years ago. Um, being a first generation entrepreneur, maybe even just out of college, uh, was uh, not something anybody would uh, look up to, and you know people were wondering whether that's even possible. How is the current atmosphere uh, helping? Is it enough? What needs to be done now? I know that as uh, in this entrepreneurs, you also have brought together a bunch of entrepreneurs to uh, mentor uh, young uh, startups. Well, the the Indus Entrepreneurs again was is is one of the finest institutions today. Certainly, the largest organization in the world focused on entrepreneurship, and we built it on the whole old Indian model of the Guru Shishya tradition. Those of us who succeeded learned something. We pass it on to wannabes, people who want to become successful. Uh, and it's very heartwarming that there's no dearth of Indians around the world. This is a movement that started in Silicon Valley, uh, who are willing to do that, and, and they're able to mentor and bring people who want to be entrepreneurs up to a point where they can get angel investing from bodies like IAN, and then they can get venture capital. And all of these bodies, IAN, uh, TAI, for example, and and at NASCOM, have been working with government on this whole idea of entrepreneurship and how important it is. To me, I think all of that work of the last 25 years has come alive in the last two. For the first time since independence, I think you have a prime minister who's talking about entrepreneurs in a budget speech and talking about how critical it is for entrepreneurs, uh, how critical it is for India to have entrepreneurs who will create economic growth. And, and startups, not just entrepreneurs. And startups, of course, is the first element of creating uh, uh, vehicles that will do that. Uh, so today, I think there's a whole slew of things that the government has done. And you're part of it in many ways. I'm part of it in many of those committees, yes. Uh, I mean, we just had a meeting yesterday uh, with the sector of DIPP. Amazingly open. Uh, you've had Mr. Amitabh Khan, there's a previous sector of DIPP, Mr. Ramesh Abhishek today very open people who are really focused on how they can make the Startup India plan successful. Uh, so many of the announcements, so many of the implementations that have happened in this whole area uh, are ones that we've been seeking for the last decade, for instance, last five years. Uh, and more than what has been done is the deep-seated uh, conviction that many of the people hold, including the Prime Minister, on what this sector can do, what this space can do. And therefore, as some things are being done and we find that something isn't quite right, course correction is happening immediately. The much feedback, faster than ever before. It's happening on the fly, much faster. I mean, the reaction time is weeks and sometimes days. And that is the reason why there's a, there is a sense of excitement. Uh, but are things changing on the ground because of the efforts of the government or do you think there's still a bit of lag before the effects can be seen? There's always a lag from the top to the bottom, but the lag is becoming shorter. At the top, there's no lag. Uh, everybody knows that this is the Prime Minister's agenda. So if you go down at the top level in government, everybody pretty much is aligned. Uh, as you go lower down, it's harder. And that's why the government is doing a lot of things on ease of doing business to insulate you from the inspector Raj so that you are in the domain where people understand the, uh, the broader uh, objectives. But today, sort of, there's also an impression that largely uh, based on what you said that the speed of action in government has picked up that there is a section of the industry, not just in technology, but the larger ecosystem, which is actually holding back on change because there is also this entire disruption which is happening because of technology, there's more competition coming in from global players, uh, there are various other pressures and industry wants to actually slow down and not go as fast as the government wants it to. There are challenges for everyone. I mean, in the old days it was the IT industry. But in the old days, the IT industry was in large corporates, it impacted efficiency, it didn't impact 
the person on the street directly. Now IT is everywhere. It's in your phone, it's in your watch. And if you look at what's happening on big data, analytics, if you look communications, artificial intelligence, augmented intelligence, you add it all together, every single company, no matter what it does, is getting disrupted. The startups who have no uh, model that they have to protect. And no legacy disadvantage. They have no legacy disadvantage are disrupting all industries. But you know, the final thing I want to pick up with you, Saurabh, that all this is this disruption and change is creating the fear of loss of jobs because you know, uh, technology led efficiency is going to uh, reduce the need for manpower. But in your view and your experience, do you think the uh, excitement and the new options being created by startups, can they make up for the loss of jobs in traditional industries? Is there a way to match uh, or, or fix this mismatch? Well, the first question is, we don't have options. This is happening anyway. We may like it, we may not like it. We are in a global marketplace, so we can't do anything which doesn't connect with this whole world system. The second is that as a country in India, we can be the creators of all these solutions. Most countries don't have that option. We have our big enough markets. We have a DNA which is entrepreneurial. Entrepreneurs are coming out of the wall. Money is flowing in. We have the option to be number two right after the US. Who knows, maybe later number one. The third is your thing on jobs. I mean, look at kids who are coming out of school and college today. You know, 90%, 80% of the careers that they are looking at were not available careers when you and I came out of college. So yes, some jobs are going. A million other jobs are coming up. Don't only look at direct. I mean, you may say, well, how many people does Flipkart or, or Snapdeal employ? directly. But then look at everything else. Who's delivering those packages? I mean, there's a whole bunch of different things that actually come up. Industries will change and new industries are going to get created. We don't have the answer for that. What we do know is there is no point in creating yesterday. Yesterday is gone. Fortunately for us as India, because we were not big players in yesterday's economy, we don't have much legacy. So we actually can be the disruptors uh, globally, particularly because in so many areas, we are amongst the top three or four markets uh, in the world. So I am this, I'm a huge optimist on where this whole focus on the startup scenario is going to lead. We have to end here uh, our conversation, uh, Saurabh, but uh, must thank you for uh, enabling and uh, funding the creation of entrepreneurship of the technology sector in India. Thank you so much for sharing your journey. Thank you, Pranjal. Good talking to you.